Each April, we celebrate National Poetry Month. Standing in front of one of the former houses where Eleanor Wiley once lived in Washington, D.C., we celebrate her legacy. Wiley was an early feminist icon and a well-regarded poet who seems to have been largely and unfortunately forgotten by modern readers. In this love poem, she honors four poets by name who influenced her. Sonnet. You are the faintest freckles on the hide of fawn, the hoofprint stamped into the slope of slithering glaciers by the antelope. The silk upon the mushroom's underside constricts you, and your eyelashes are wide in pools uptilted on the hills. You grope for swings of water twisted to a rope over a ledge where amber pebbles glide. Shelley perceived you on the Caucasus. Blake prisoned you in glassy grains of sand and Keats in goblin jars from Samarkand. Poor Coleridge found you in a poppy seed. But you escape the clutching most of us, shaped like a ghost and imminent with speed. Eleanor Wiley was born into a socially prominent family, and she scandalized the society world with her multiple marriages and affairs. Wiley lived at this address in the Scott Circle neighborhood with her first husband from 1906 to 1910. Philip Simmons Hitchborn was mentally unstable and abusive. Wiley had one son with him, but she abandoned both husband and child to live with another married man, a DC lawyer named Horace Wiley. When her affair was reported in the society columns of newspapers, she was ostracized by her family, and the couple moved to England and lived under an assumed name. After Hitchborn committed suicide and Wiley attained a divorce, they returned to the US and married. Wiley's third husband was another poet, William Rose Benet, but this marriage too was short-lived. Wiley is the author of five books of poems, including Nets to Catch the Wind and Angels and Earthly Creatures, and four novels, including Jennifer Lorne and The Orphan Angel. In the 1920s, she lived in Greenwich Village in New York and worked as the poetry editor for Vanity Fair and a contributing editor to The New Republic.